I am Andrew Ryan, and I'm here to ask you a question. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? No, says the man in Washington, it belongs to the poor. No, says the man in the Vatican, it belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow, it belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose... What country in the world is there a place for people like me? Those are the words of Andrew Ryan, a visionary whose story is told through 2K Boston's Art Deco-inspired first-person shooter, Bioshock. First-person shooters are the most abundant genre of games in existence. When creating a game, developers need to weigh the risk of straying from the most well-played genre in order to create something new and innovative, against the risk of creating just another Halo clone or Call of Duty wannabe. It's a competitive market, and few shooters ever change the formula enough to stand out from the rest of the pack, at least in sheer design. Bioshock is one of those few. Formerly known as Irrational Games, 2K Boston announced a couple of years ago that Bioshock, the spiritual successor to System Shock 2, would be the vehicle they'd use to redefine what it means to be a first-person shooter. While they haven't exactly done that, Bioshock certainly sets the bar higher than it's ever been for integrative storytelling, art direction, and open-minded gameplay. Set in the 1950s, Bioshock investigates the story of an inventor named Andrew Ryan, a man who, while read people might recognize as an exceptional person, or at least he sees himself that way. Ryan felt that the world and its governments were unacceptable and oppressive to the genius of people like himself, inventors, artists, and industrialists. So after the Second World War, Ryan gathered together as many of these people as he could and basically withdrew from society to fulfill his vision and create Rapture, an underwater city intended as a utopia of free enterprise and unrestricted research. From the get to the go, you, the player, are placed into the first-person perspective of Jack, a silent protagonist who survives a plane crash and finds himself seeking refuge in the otherworldly city of Rapture. Unfortunately for you, Rapture, like communism, looks good on paper but utterly failed in practice. Ryan's city under the sea has been ravaged by a war between rival factions, fought over a substance called Atom, a product of the unrestricted research so encouraged by Ryan himself. Adam basically allows unlimited genetic modification, and the average citizen in Rapture has exploited this so zealously that they've come to scarcely resemble human beings, cannibalizing the dead and committing wanton acts of violence, all in the name of getting more Adam. The aforementioned rival factions play a huge part in the story, as well as the moral choices you'll need to make throughout the game. It's difficult to explain what makes this excellent story so excellent without spoiling anything. All of the characters you'll meet, get to know, and even kill are some of the most memorable personalities you've ever encountered in a digital environment. There's solid voice acting to back up the intelligent dialogue, and the voiceovers from every character come to you while you're playing, so the action is never broken up by cutscenes. There are also radio diaries that you can find that are equally well done and provide a continuous stream of backstory to help you understand how Rapture became the way it is today. First person shooters rarely ever present a story that achieves this level of significance, and particularly in today's market. Bioshock truly makes you care about what's going to happen next. The narrative is visceral and engaging, and the choices you'll have to make that affect the overall outcome will almost surely hold your attention from start to finish. Playing a shooter better mean that you get to shoot stuff, and Bioshock promises an interesting and varied arsenal of boomsticks, ranging from your standard shotguns and machine guns to the ailment spitting chemical thrower. Each weapon also has multiple types of ammunition, some of them more effective against certain enemies. Unlike more military-themed games and alike to the champions of the genre, Bioshock allows you to choose from any weapon on the fly, so you won't need to make a choice between a crossbow and a shotgun because the inventory is all stored in that magic pocket rarely seen in most shooters nowadays. The idea might seem a little silly to die-hard fans of tactical shooters, but with this much firepower right at your fingertips, who really cares? You can cycle through each weapon or hold down the right bumper to pause the game for a weapon inventory screen, which can become helpful when you're trying to unload on a more powerful enemy and don't have time to reload. 
In addition to the various weapons are a wide selection of genetic powers you can gain called plasmids that work a lot like magical spells, just more sci-fi and less fantasy. Plasmids allow you to do things like confuse enemies with decoys, make enemies defend you for a short time, provoke enemies into fighting each other instead of you, and some even grant you elemental powers that let you flash freeze enemies, set them ablaze, or fry them with a 100,000 volt shock. Plasmids add a completely different layer of depth to the gameplay that few games hereafter will be able to master. You can utilize the weapons with your plasmids in so many innovative ways that it's unlikely you'll get through the game having discovered every single one. To gain plasmids, you'll need Adam. And to get Adam, you'll need a little sister, the harvesters who roam the city, cannibalizing dead bodies. Unfortunately, the big daddies, bulky metal-plated guardians who serve as mini-boss enemies, protect the little sisters at all times. Killing a big daddy will be one of the most intense battles you'll ever fight. These guys soak up your ammo like a sponge and dish out attacks that can literally kill you in one or two hits. So make sure you're prepared before you decide to pick on Big Daddy's little sister. The principal test in ethics you'll face is whether to harvest or save each little sister. While harvesting gains you more atom with which to upgrade your character, saving a little sister might end up having unforeseen benefits as the game continues. And each choice has its own effect on the outcome of the story. The path of the righteous is not always easy. The reward will become clear in time. Be patient. You'll experience the world of Rapture through a modified version of Epic's Unreal Tech that 2K Boston has tweaked to flawlessly portray all of their ideas. The art direction in the game carries the mark of 1940s Art Deco style. Every design, texture, and structure looks great not because it's groundbreaking tech, but because it's all so damn consistent with everything else in the game. And this, surprisingly, is not achieved through the absence of varied environments. Effects such as water, fire, explosions, and especially lighting, adds to the visceral experience and creepy atmosphere of the game. What's most surprising is that all of this can occur simultaneously with almost no technical difficulties whatsoever. And while the graphics are not perfect, you'll probably think so most of the time. In the grand scheme of things, it's amazing to think that a first-person shooter could be worth buying with the absence of a competitive multiplayer component, but Bioshock genuinely fits the bill in every respect. Few shooters make of the campaign more than a glorified tutorial nowadays, but Bioshock turns that notion upside down as well. The game stands out from its brethren in more than a few ways, offering evolving gameplay that can change to meet your preferences, and crafting an outstanding story that you won't soon forget. Simply, Bioshock is one of the best games you'll play in the current generation, and if you haven't already, I can't see any reason not to recommend taking your own trip through Andrew Ryan's City Under the Sea.